How's it going everyone? My name is Rob. I am uh, the water jet operator here at FDF uh, Race Shop and I'm going to show you guys a water jet. Yeah, so the main uh, heart of the water jet is uh, this pump here. It takes 150 PSI water into it, kicks out 50,000. Take off the cover and I'll show you guys what's inside. So inside of here, we have the water intake, which goes through these two filters down here. And then it goes up into the system where it gets pressurized and then gets kicked through these three cylinders and kicked out at 50,000 PSI down that tube towards the cutting head. So water alone doesn't just cut steel. What you do need as well is an abrasive. And down at the end there, we have our abrasive tank, so I'll show you guys that. So what we do is we take our abrasive, pour in here. As you see, there's still some uh, abrasive just on top from when I loaded it earlier today. Just throw that down inside the hole. Pull the plunger up, turn on the air pressure, and it pressurizes this tank, so it sends the uh, abrasive to the cutting head. So this uh, contraption here is our uh, abrasive uh, accumulation tank. They do build this thing that you can buy. Uh, we have been trying to make our own, just trying to clean out as much abrasive out of the tank as we can. So I'll turn on a sump pump and get the water flowing. Yeah, fills up with water, water circulates, trickles back into the tank, ideally leaving as much sand as you can inside of this tank, inside of this bag to uh, mitigate the amount of times that we have to clean out that tank. So the water jet runs on water and sand and the intake for the water actually comes in from the building right here, goes up through both of these filters and then through the softening system and then down into the two pumps which also have two more filters. So this is used to soften the water just so that you don't injure the cutting head with uh, hard water or minerals that would be in typical city water. All right, so this here is our, uh, the main cutting head of the water jet. This is just a, a little muff to protect the uh, splashback from when the water hits the plate. So here is where you uh, have the abrasive mixed into the cutting head, mixed with the water, and it comes out this tiny little jet at the bottom at the 49,000 PSI, which we have set to. On top here, you have a, essentially a wastegate. As the water is going through, it stops before it continues cutting. And to stop the shock to the system, the wastegate opens up and it spits water at a tube over there to just relieve the pressure. So you might be asking, how does this water jet move and how does it know where it is? Well, if you come a little closer here, you can actually see that there is a strip right down the center here. This talks to this little magnetic sensor just in here, and that tells the machine where its position is along the y-axis. There'll be another one for the x, and there'll be a screw inside of this uh, side of there that will control the z-axis. Um, it moves on these two round rails with some wheels. The water jet gets the water to the cutting head through this really large solid line, which you think would be uh, in danger of getting kind of shook apart over use, but it's actually clamped down here, as well as this whole unit is a bearing assembly and swivels with the machine. So nothing here has any force on it other than just the fact that it moves a little bit with vibration. Everything's locked pretty well, pretty well where it needs to be and swivels as the machine articulates around. Down here you also have the abrasive tube, which sends the abrasive through this tube, through this arm, all the way up, across, up there, into the cutting head, which then mixes at the mixing tube. So this is the main computer slash controller for the water jet. On here you have all the actions that you want to do, whether or not 
moving the head back and forth, moving up and down, or as you can see on here, showing us what cut is currently on the table. Each one of these parts uh, currently is, you know, a, a 3 16 steel sheet on there. All that's gonna be cut out. This is set to a decently high quality so that we get a good cut on each one of our parts. So before we start our cut again, one thing we have to do is raise the water level. This does cut underwater, which does reduce the uh, decibel rating significantly. So let's get the water up. So once we have our water level back up and we have our uh, head centered over where we're gonna continue cutting, as you can see by this little crosshairs, we have already got our Z height, everything set, so now we're just gonna continue the cut. So these tubes here, what you have is the wastegate water or the pressure relief valve water comes out of this one. Uh, and it's usually really, really, really hot uh, because of all the pressure. This one here is to uh, drain the tanks at the end of the day. And these three little ones are the cooling lines that go to each one of the plungers on the pump. Yeah, so once our uh, piece has been uh, cut, walk back over to the table, give it a little lower, and then because our tank has some sand in the bottom of it and our abrasive catcher isn't 100% catching everything, you do end up with some sand on top of the plate. So you take your trusty little hose, walk over, spray it off. Since this stuff is pretty thin and fairly small, we have tabbed everything. So I gotta walk over and actually break it out. You come over to your piece, break the tab, and there you go. So right now, the water jet is in its uh, go home location, in its user home, which is the machine home coordinates. Now, this cut starts right down here. If I was to start this where it is, it's not gonna line up with the cut that's currently on the table. So I have to tell it to go to its path start, which is where I set up the home location for this cut. So now that we've done a quick little overview of the water jet, we are gonna get back to cutting. If you wanna see us cut anything in half, leave it in the comments and uh, best one, I guess we'll get picked. I'm not really too sure on what's going on there yet, but this thing can cut up to about 12 inches thick of steel, so have some fun. <laughs>